AJ Gentile joins me now. He is the CEO of Speedweed, Los Angeles' premier marijuana delivery service. AJ, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks for having me. You can announce the, the Tonight Show with that <laughs> kind of energy. That's I just really gotta, good. I just got to work on my, <laughs> uh, you know, my monologue, I guess, as it were. Um, AJ, let's start with an overview. What is it Speedweed does? Speedweed is the largest, I'd say, homegrown cannabis delivery service on the planet. Hmm. Homegrown meaning we didn't. We weren't tech guys from Silicon Valley who raised a zillion dollars. We built the business from, from nothing. We self-funded it and grew organically over 10 years. Wow. Um, it's funny you use the term homegrown because homegrown cannabis used to be associated with, yeah, I grew it, but it used to be like the lowest stuff. And you were back then, everybody was smoking the leaves, <laughs> which now it's like, you were smoking the leaves? Why would you do that? Anyways, I digress. How many customers do you have? What areas do you operate in? And how much weed do you deliver every day? Um, let's see, we're up to 260,000 consumers. Um, we're rolling out of 11 dispensaries now. We have 11 more scheduled, 55 in the pipeline. That covers San Diego to San Francisco, most of the Inland Empire. Um, by the end of the year, we expect to cover all of California, except for maybe rural areas. Um, we're opening Las Vegas. Uh, we close Michigan. And we're looking now at Florida. We're actively involved. New York is my home state. We're working there, and uh, and Alaska, hmm. and Hawaii, and Hawaii. Wow. Yeah. So I guess you wouldn't deliver weed to Hawaiian customers from Los Angeles. No, you can't do that. Right. You can deliver anywhere, but you can't cross state lines. Ah, still so not yet. Even though the passage of the States Act this morning has has that not changed the whole scenario? Not until it's uh, descheduled. Okay. Yeah, and so the, we have to wait for the DEA to agree to that. Right. So um, why would I want my weed delivered as opposed to just going to one of the don't know whether they're legal or not dispensaries, but there's one on every corner these days. Isn't it funny how some questions are just asked and answered at, this, at the same time? <laughs> why would you want to go to one of those places? Um, but 40% off. They don't pay tax. Well, that's, that's right. And that's really the biggest problem with the industry is, are the places like that, because it's difficult for, for legitimate businesses that's to compete. That's been a consistent theme mentioned by almost every single guest we've had today, is that the tax-free, non-legitimized brokers or dealers are putting a lot of pressure on the whole legal framework. Uh, t all the pressure. Um, all the pressure. All the pressure. Because they, you know, the, the regulations, it's... No, it's not, a, it's not a good package, but it's the one we've got. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad it's there, but it needs work. 35, 40% gross tax on businesses is really difficult to swallow, and uh, cannabis businesses can't write anything off. You know, we have to pay taxes on our gross revenue, unlike right. most businesses like, that pay well, profit. Let you do it, but I'm going to stand on your spine That's while right. you try to do it. That's right. <laughs> That's horrible. Yeah, and, that's horrible. And, and what the straight regulators, they need to do as far as uh, projecting to their constituents that they're doing something is they continue to regulate and regulate the few businesses that are legal. But what they really need to be doing is, in, is enforcement mm -hmm. with the most of the cannabis businesses mm -hmm. in, in California that are not, 90% are not. Okay, so here's the conundrum is from where I sit. It's like, if you start throwing people in jail for selling weed, have you not just recriminalized cannabis and only made it legal to sell for the people who have the financial and intellectual capacity to jump through all the hoops the government has created so you can give them 40% of your upside. Well, I wouldn't put anyone in jail for, for marijuana, but I never would have. It's nonsense that anybody goes to jail for it. Uh, uh, what I'm talking about is if there are rules in place and, and we don't have to agree with them. And most of the rules that are in place, I don't agree with. I'm a libertarian. I'm, I'm mm. free, free. Rules are know. made for breaking. That's right. That's right. I'm <laughs> a, you know. crime is getting caught. <laughs> Those are well, all the things my father taught me. <laughs> mine too. Uh, yeah, that's how I got started in this business. But, um, but now that I'm on, uh, on the light side of the force, uh, we, we deploy a lot of capital and a lot of resources to, to stay compliant and to be legal, but also to the businesses that are legal in California. We were the ones who carried the ball and got it legal. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so we, you're That's welcome. Funny. We thought we were the ones who did that <laughs> yeah, in Canada. No. <laughs> well, you did. I mean, well, it was very grassroots in Canada, but right. California was very political, right. um, like California is. Um, so no one should go to jail for running an illegal cannabis company. Absolutely not. But th there has to be some way to level the playing field. I, I don't believe that, that big business is the answer. I don't like big you know, investment funds coming in with a zillion dollars and being cannabis companies. I don't care for that. I like the homegrown approach. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, uh, it's very difficult to compete with 5,000 delivery services that 
that are half price because they don't pay taxes, they don't pay their drivers on the books. You know, they're, they're selling other things, other recreational products that you know that we don't sell. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of upside there. It's hard to compete with those guys. Mm -hmm. So well, the solution you think is enforcement. I don't know if that's the solution. I know that's the biggest problem right, right. now. I think the solution is good legislation, right. um, but you know we're going to move at the speed of government. It took us 20 years to get here, and uh, it'll take us another 20 to fix it. Right. Okay, let's change gears a bit. I want to know as an investor that now you have joined High Hampton. We have. The, the company has sold itself to High Hampton, and now you're part of the High Hampton family of companies. Sort of. Um, uh, we've, we've partnered with High Hampton. We haven't sold completely. It's not okay. a full acquisition, mm -hmm. um, but High Hampton is, will probably own about half of, of our company. Our company is 2083 Group. So we're known for a Speedweed, which is the delivery service. Um, that's just, it's very public facing. We've been around for a long time. But 2083 Group is a group of companies and consultants and contractors whose general purpose is to acquire customers and make them happy and keep them satisfied for as long as we can. Um, and most of those companies are mine and my partners, but we started to bring on other partners and contractors and consultants as well, and we feed each other synergistically. Hmm. Like we were talking about the studio on Sunset Boulevard. That, is, that really doesn't have anything to do with delivering weed to folks, but what it does is it provides a venue for cannabis-centric personalities to come and perform or do a show, hmm. and also an opportunity for cannabis brands to get to sponsor and get their brand out there because there's only limited avenues to do that. Hmm. So projects like that, or we're working with the, with Cannabition, the museum in Las Vegas. The, it's the first cannabis museum in, in the world, and it's an immersive experience. And they're partners of ours. So it, it's those type of relationships. How do we reach cu as many customers as we can? How do we engage them and make them happy so we can keep them in the fold for as long as we can? Wow. Okay, so then how does the business model of delivering cannabis work? It's, you know, it's, it, it's so strange because we've, we've gotten a lot of press coverage over the years, and when the press comes to cover how we work, they're very disappointed. <laughs> they're, very dis they're very disappointed. They think it's a lot of dreadlocks and, and reggae music and, and bikinis. Armored cars and machine guns. That's what they're looking for, right. and, uh, but it's not. It's, it, our office looks like an office. It runs like a business. Delivering cannabis is a lot like delivering pizza with the same level of, gla of glamour. Right. Um, an order comes in through the website or through mobile, and it gets routed to one of our partner dispensaries, and it gets packed, checked, handed off to a driver. Uh, the driver rolls out to the customer. You as the customer, you track your driver on a map like you would Uber or Grubhub or any of those services. Um, you get an ETA, driver shows up, you sign, you can pay with cash, credit or crypto, and then you enjoy. Mm -hmm. How many delivery services are there in California? How many legal ones or how many are there? Well, let's, let's start let's with both. <laughs> legal delivery only, there's probably a dozen, I would, mm. I would guess, and I couldn't name them. You know, I can maybe name three or four, but I'm just going to say a dozen. There's only about a thousand retail permits that have been issued, maybe 1,200, whatever the number is. But if you go on Weed Maps, right now there are 16,000 cannabis businesses and 6,000 cannabis delivery services. There are much fewer permits than that. So, uh, so I, no one really knows what the number is. Wow. So, correct me if I'm mistaken. I always will. Oh, yes, great. <laughs> okay, well, I'll be careful with that then. Uh, next thing you know, it sounds like I don't know what I'm talking about. You do, but no. So, um, these 16,000, call it, delivery services that are not registered, aren't paying taxes, yet are cutting, cutting your grass. Uh, you're, you said earlier that enforcement is not necessarily throwing people in jail, but we need something to level the playing field, which means that the government needs to regulate and has to do so consistently. Yep. So that's not happening right now. It is not. And thus, the black market is thriving at a multiple of the legitimate market. I would say it's 10 times the size of the legitimate market has never been stronger. Okay, so this, this makes no sense. I mean, California leading the charge of medical legalization since the 70s, and now they've legalized it for all seasons and all reasons, and but they're not enforcing it. They're not, and we worked very close with the legislature and the assembly as, as the package is being put together, and uh, you can find me on YouTube and Sacramento screaming about this before the laws were passed. If you do this, you are creating a black market bill. Please don't do this. Um, it didn't get through, hmm. uh, but that's where we are. It's 
you know, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what the real answer is. I, I, I don't, I don't want to create more regulations for cannabis businesses. This is an industry that needs to be set free and unleashed. I don't want it to be bound by the chains of government. Um, but I think you can, you can do enforcement through other means. You, could, you can use the Labor Commission and the labor laws uh, as a way of starting to weed out the bad businesses. But, so we're not talking about, we're talking about companies that you know, pay their drivers off the books and there's no health plan and the, you know, they're not treated well and the working conditions are lousy. You know, that, that's most of, of my competitors. So we can start with labor laws and we can make sure that the drivers are being paid properly. And are you getting mileage reimbursement? Drivers, are you getting reimbursed for miles? You know you're supposed to. Um, those types of things. Hmm. Um, those are things we do. Everyone's so the illegal drivers are actually getting shafted by the illegal companies? So shafted. Wow. So shafted. Really? Um, We're yeah. not talking drive shaft here. <laughs> no, no. They're getting <laughs> shafted. Um, but they don't know it. Right. Huh. Interesting. Okay, well, AJ, that's uh, fascinating stuff. We're going to leave it there for now, but we're going to come back probably to your studio okay. and uh, have you on again, though that'll be weird. AJ, we're coming <laughs> to your house, and you're going to be a guest in your own house. Weird as that seems, we're going to do it anyways. Thanks very much for joining me today. Thanks so much.